हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वी कंटिन्यू रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैटो वन चैप्टर फाइव टेक्स ट्वेंटी वन वी हैव बीन हियरिंग द कॉन्वर्सेशन between narad and vyasadev or rather narad muni has been telling vyasadev the reason for his dissatisfaction because he's not yet described properly the glories of supreme lord shri krishna samagat mangatma namave hi amokagre mam atmana atmanam ave amokratri जगत ट्रांसलेशन Your goodness has perfect vision. You yourself can know the super soul personality of Godhead, because you are present <clears throat> as the plenary portion of the Lord. Although you are birthless, you have appeared on this earth for the well-being of all people. Please, therefore, describe the transcendental pastimes of the supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, more vividly. I think we read this yesterday. सुप्त श्लोकुनुवर्णन यद उत्तम श्लोका सर्कल्स हैव पॉजिटिवली कंक्लूडेड दैट द इनफैलिबल पर्पस ऑफ द एडवांसमेंट ऑफ नॉलेज नेमली ऑस्टेरिटी स्टडी ऑफ द वेदास सैक्रिफाइस चैंटिंग ऑफ हिम्स एंड चैरिटी कलमिनेट इन द ट्रांसेंडेंटल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द लॉर्ड Who is defined in choice poetry? Purport: Human intellect is developed for advancement of learning in art, science, philosophy, physics, chemistry, psychology, economics, political, politics, etc. By culture of such such knowledge, the human society can attain perfection of life. This perfection in life culminates in the realization of the supreme being, Vishnu. The Shruti therefore directs that those who are actually advanced in learning should aspire for the service of Lord Vishnu. Unfortunately, persons who are not enamored by the external beauty of Vishnu Maya do not understand that culmination of perfection or self-realization depends on Vishnu. Vishnu Maya means sense enjoyment, which is transient and miserable. Those who are entrapped by Vishnu Maya utilize advancement. of knowledge for sense enjoyment shri narada muni has explained that all paraphernalia of the cosmic universe is but an emanation from the lord out of his different energies because the lord has set in motion by his inconceivable energy 
the actions and reactions of the created manifestation. They have come out to be out of his energy. They rest on his energy. And after inhalation, they merge into him. Nothing is therefore different from him. But at the same time, the Lord is always different from them. So Narad Muni, he has already said that this entire material creation is one of the energies of the Supreme Lord. We, the individual souls, are his marginal energy. Uh, so everything is happening by the energy of the Supreme Lord. So this material world is actually created for us to correct our attitude of trying to lord it over this material nature, of trying to enjoy this material nature and help us understand that we are spiritual beings, part and parcel of God, and that we need to go back home, back to Godhead, engaging in devotional service. That is perfection of life. So there are different branches of knowledge which are there for human beings. Art, science, philosophies, physics, chemistry, psychology, economics, politics, etc. But the perfection of knowledge is to understand the Supreme Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna. That's the perfection of knowledge. To understand our relationship with God. When advancement of knowledge is applied in the service of the Lord, the whole process, <clears throat> the whole process becomes absolute. The personality of Godhead and his transcendental name, fame, glory, etc. are all non-different from him. Therefore, all the sages and devotees of the Lord have recommended that the subject matter of art, science, philosophy, physics, chemistry, psychology and all other branches of knowledge should be wholly and solely applied in the service of the Lord. Art, literature, poetry, painting, etc. may be used in glorifying the Lord. The fiction writers, poets and celebrated literaries are generally engaged in writing of sensuous subjects. But if they turn towards the service of the Lord, they can describe the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. Valmiki was a great poet, but similarly, Vyashadeva is a great writer, and both of them have absolutely engaged themselves in delineating the transcendental activities of the Lord, and by, and by doing so, have become immortal. Similarly, science and philosophy also should be applied in the service of the Lord. There is no use presenting dry speculative theories for sense gratification. Philosophy and science should be engaged to establish the glory of the Lord. Advanced people are eager to understand the absolute truth through the medium of science and therefore a great scientist should endeavor to prove the existence of the Lord on a scientific basis. Similarly, philosophical speculation should be utilized to establish the supreme truth as sentient and all-powerful. Similarly, all other branches of knowledge should always be engaged in the service of the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, also the same is affirmed. All knowledge not engaged in the service of Lord is but ni science. Real utilization of advanced knowledge is to establish the glories of the Lord, and that is a real import. Scientific knowledge engaged in the service of the Lord and all similar activities are all factually harikirtana, all or glorification of the Lord. So Prabhupada is going on to say knowledge. You know, when we have knowledge, it should be applied. For example, one studies to be a doctor. So he has the knowledge, but he has to practice that knowledge. And he becomes a doctor, you know. It's, I mean, if you have knowledge, then you have to apply the knowledge. Same like a lawyer, he studies the law, then he applies the knowledge. Similarly, early, we just read in the earlier verse, the culmination of all knowledge is to engage in devotional service to the Supreme Lord. That is the perfection of all knowledge. 
So all the branches of knowledge should be applied in the service of the poor. Art, literature, poetry, painting, everything to glorify the Supreme Lord. Prabhupada is mentioning Valmiki and Vyasa Dev. They did that. Valmiki wrote the Ramayana and Vyasa Dev. He's written the Srimad Bhagavatam, describing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. So, in, engaging everything in the service of the Lord. That is practical application of knowledge. That's why it's called science. Science of Krishna consciousness. Science means you practically apply the knowledge. And the practical application of knowledge of the science of God is to engage in devotional service. Serving the Lord. Service begins by hearing and chanting. Hearing the glories of the Lord. From Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. So Prabhupada is saying people are eager to understand <clears throat> God by scientific basis, through philosophical speculation. So one should endeavor to explain the glories of the Lord scientifically or through philosophy. So everything should be dovetailed to glorify the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Truth. That is the perfection of knowledge. So... Yeah, scientific knowledge engaged in the service of the Lord and all similar activities are all factually Hari Kirtan or glorification of the Lord. So this is all glorification of the Lord. By hearing Bhagavatam, reading Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, that is devotional service. It's Hari Kirtan, glorifying the Supreme Lord. Aham purati tabhave bhavam vane. Aham purati tabhave bhavam vane. Kasya astu kasya shanad veda vadinam. Dasya tatu kasya chana veda vadinam. Rupito balaka eva yogina. In Nirupita balaka eva yoginam. Yushro shane pra prashine vivik shatam. Yushro shane pra prashine vivik shatam. Translation O Muni, in the last millennium I was born as the son of a certain maidservant engaged in the service of Brahmanas who were following the principles of Vedanta when they were living together during the fourth month of the rainy season I was engaged in their personal service Purput the wonder of an atmosphere surcharged with devotional service to the Lord is, is briefly described here in Mashri Narada Muni. He was the son of the most significant person parentage. He was not properly educated. Still, because his complete energy was engaged in the service of the Lord, he became an immortal sage. Such is a powerful action of devotional service. The living entities are the marginal energy of the Lord and therefore they are meant for being properly utilized in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. When this is not done, one's situation is called Maya. Therefore, the illusion of Maya is at once dissipated as soon as one's full energy is converted in the service of the Lord instead of incense enjoyment. From the personal example of Sri Narada Muni, in his previous birth, it is clear that the service of the Lord begins with the service of the Lord's bona fide servants. The Lord says that the service of his servants is greater than than his personal service. Service of the devotee is more valuable than the service of the Lord. One should engage, therefore, to the bona fide servant of the Lord, constantly engaged in his service, accept such a service, servant as a spiritual master and engage himself in his spiritual master's service. 
such as spiritual master, is the transparent medium by which to visualize the Lord, who is beyond the conception of the material senses. By service of the bona fide spiritual master, the Lord consents to reveal himself in proportion to the service rendered. Utilization of the human energy in the service of the Lord is the progressive path of salvation. The whole cosmic creation becomes at one identical with the Lord as soon as service in relation with the Lord is rendered under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. The expert spiritual master knows the art of utilizing everything to glorify the Lord. And therefore, under his guidance, the whole world can be turned into the spiritual abode by the divine grace of the Lord's servant. Narad Muni is now telling Rasadev about his past life. He's saying in the last millennium, means in the previous creation. In the previous creation, Narad Muni, before he became Narad Muni, he was the son of a simple maidservant. And she somehow served these pure devotees during the Chaturmasya. You know, during Chaturmas, the, the, the sages, the devotees wouldn't travel that time during the rainy season. They would stay in one place. So they somehow stayed in this ashram where she was a servant and she was serving them. And so her son was very small. Narad Muni in his previous life was the small boy. He would help his mother also sometimes in the service. He was engaged in their personal service. You know, he would help. So here Prabhupada is explaining uh, in the purport that how Narad Muni, he was just a small boy right? and he engaged in the service of the pure devotees and now how he has become in his next life, he's become the great sage Narad Muni. You know, such a great personality and he's become a great spiritual master. We see he's the spiritual master. Prahlad Maharaj, Dhruv Maharaj, uh, he gave instructions to Priyavrat. So, so it's such great personalities. Narad Muni is uh, giving instructions to. So how did he achieve this position? He served the pure devotees of the Lord. But service. Every uh, service is the, is the eternal activity of the soul. Prabhupada explains in the introduction of Bhagavad Gita, the Sanatan Dharma, that every soul, you know, just like water is liquid, the sugar, dharma of sugar is sweet, the dharma of salt is saltiness. Similarly, the dharma of the soul is to serve. Means you cannot take away that thing from that. Like for example, sugar, you cannot take away salt, sugar, sweetness from sugar or saltiness from the soul. Similarly, service from the soul. What happens in this material atmosphere, our deserving propensity is perverted. And then we want to serve the our material senses or serve this material world, maya. We may think we are the lords, but actually if we analyze what we are doing, we are serving serving our parents or our siblings or our friends or society or community or our own senses to satisfy the demands of the body. So the service attitude actually should be, the, the perfection of it is to engage it in the service of the Lord, that is devotional service. And how to engage in the service of the Lord? Search out a pure devotee, engage in his service. And the pure devotee, because he's expert, he can engage us in properly serving the Lord. One should accept such a pure devotee as his spiritual master and constantly serve such a spiritual master. And such a spiritual master, he is like a transparent medium. He can show us God. Krishna says, Tatvidi Pranipatena Pariprashnena Sevaya Opadeksha Yanti Tegyanam Gyanina Statva Darshana. That such a spiritual master, such a pure devotee, because he has seen the truth, he can show us the truth. Because he has seen God, he can show us God. 
So serving such a pure devotee, such a spiritual master. And this is the perfection of utilizing our energy, our human energy that we have. So great service is done. Krishna uh, Vishwana Chakravati Thakur also says, Yasya Prasada, Bhagavad Prasado, Yasya Prasada, Nagati Kutropi. By serving the spiritual master, by pleasing the spiritual master, one pleases Krishna. By displeasing the spiritual master, one displeases Krishna. Krishna also himself says that one who is my devotee directly is actually not my devotee, but one who is a devotee of my devotee is truly my devotee. Means Krishna also wants to be approached through the medium of the bona fide spiritual master, of the pure devotee. Because a pure devotee knows how to please Krishna. By pleasing such a devotee, we can please Krishna. So under the guidance of the pure devotee. And in this way, this material world can be changed into spiritual world. Because after all, everything belongs to Krishna. And if anything that is utilized in Krishna's service becomes spiritual. So this is the mercy of the devotee of the Lord. We can see how even uh, Mrigari, the hunter, he was a hunter. How by mercy of Narad Muni, he became a great devotee. Or, you know, it's uh, so many people, they became like Nala Kovir Mani Grip. By Narad Muni's mercy, they became devotees. Although he cursed them, but the curse of a Vaishnava is also a boon. It's a benediction for our own purification. So the mercy of the pure devotee. This is how Narad Muni is also explaining that he has become Narad Muni because he got the mercy of the devotees. He served them. Any questions, comments? Going on. Te mai apita kila cha paler bake. Te mai apita kila cha paler bake. Nante drita kri dana ke nu vartini. Nante drita kri dana ke nu vartini. Chakruhu kripam yatyapi tul yadarshana. Chakru kripam yatyapi tul yadarshana. Shushru shamane manayod pabhashini. Shushru samane manayod lapabhashini. Translation, although they were impartial by nature, those followers of the Vedanta blessed me with their causeless mercy. As far as I was concerned, I was self-controlled and had no attachment for sports, even though I was a boy. In addition, I was not naughty and I did not speak more than required. But in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, all the Vedas are searching after me. Lord Sri Chaitanya says that in the Vedas, the subject matters are only three, namely to establish the relation of the living entities with the personality of Godhead, perform the, rel perform the relative duties in devotional service, and thus achieve the followers of the Vedanta, indicate the pure and devotees thus achieve, of the person. Thus achieve the ultimate sorry. goal back to Godhead. Yeah, sorry, I missed the And thus and thus achieve the ultimate goal back to Godhead. As such, Vedanta Vadits or the followers of Vedanta indicate the pure devotees of the personality of Godhead. Such Vedanta Vadis or the Bhakti Vedantas are impartial in distributing the transcendental knowledge of devotional service. To them, no one is enemy or friend. No one is educated or uneducated uneducated. 
no one is especially favorable and no one is unfavorable the bhakti vidanta see that the people in general are wasting time in false sensuous things their business is to get the ignorant mass of people to re establish the lost relationship with the personality of godhead by such endeavor even the most forgotten soul is roused up to the sense of spiritual life and that being initiated by the bhakti vedantas the people in general gradually progress on the path of transcendental realization so the vedanta vadis initiated the boy even before he became self controlled and was detached from childless childish sporting etc but before the initiation he the boy became more and more advanced in discipline which is very which is very essential for one who wishes to make progress in the line in the system of varnashrama dharma which is the beginning of actual human life small boys after 5 years of age are sent to become brahmacharis at the guru ashrama where these things are systematically taught to every boy but he a king's son or the son of ordinary of an ordinary citizen the training was compulsory not only to create good citizens of the state but also to prepare the boy's future life for spiritual realization the irresponsible life of sense enjoyment was unknown to the children of the followers of the varnashrama system a boy was even injected with spiritual acumen before being placed by the father in the womb of the mother both the father and the mother were responsible for the boy's success in being liberated from the material bondage that is the process of successful family planning it is to be get children for complete perfection without being self controlled without being disciplined and without being fully obedient no one can become successful in following the instructions of the spiritual master and without doing so no one is able to go back to godhead so anand when he is telling we are so dev that they were impartial because they were they had understood the vedas vedanta they were the pure devotees all the vedas krishna saying in bhagavad gita vedas cha sarve aham eva vedya by all the vedas i am to be known so the pure devotees they understood the vedas because they are engaging in krishna service lord chaitanya saying the vedas are teaching us these three things sambandha abhideya and prayojana sambandha our relationship with god what is the relationship of every individual soul with god abideya to perform the duties in devotional service oh because there is a relationship between god and the individual soul jivera swarup hai krishna nitya das lord chaitanya says every individual soul is eternal servant of krishna so the duty duty is to serve god to serve krishna that is devotional service and prayojana the result go back home back to godhead go to the spiritual world revive our love for krishna prema pamartho maha that is the goal of human life lord chaitanya says each and every soul has a love for krishna in our heart which we have forgotten we simply have to revive that love by the perform by performing devotional service each of us have it every living entity every soul so the vedanta vadis followers of vedanta they are the pure devotees of the lord they understood the vedanta they understood it is that the supreme lord he is the supreme worshipable personality so one needs to engage in his devotional service and they understood that every soul is part and parcel of god so that's why they have no enemy there is they are equal to everyone no enemy no friend everyone is equal everyone is part and parcel of god they realize this 
So they are giving this mercy, their mercy to everyone. They want everyone to go back home, back to Godhead. They want to wake up, wake up sleeping soul. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Kota nidra jao maya kot pishachi rakole. That how long are you going to sleep in the lap of maya? Wake up, wake up, jiva jago, jiva jago. He says, Lord Chaitanya is saying, wake up, wake up. So that, that is what the pure devotees are doing. They want us to wake up, to revive our relationship with Krishna, to get out of this material world, to go back home, back to Godhead. So this is what the business of the pure devotee is. So they initiated this small boy who was Narad Muni in his previous life. But Narad Muni, he was self-controlled, he was disciplined, he was very, uh, he used to listen to what they are, they are saying. So Prabhupada is explaining here that in the Vedic society, in Varna Sharma society, the boys, they were trained from the young age, they were sent to the Gurukul, they were trained in brahmacharya. They were trained in spiritual knowledge from the beginning itself so that they could live happily in this life and at the same time cultivate the knowledge of God and end of life, go back home, back to Godhead. Prabhupada is mentioning that in Varna Sharma society, even before conception, the mother and father would perform the Gargdan Samskar so that they invite a good soul into the womb and the goal was to liberate the soul out of this material world so that it becomes the last life of the soul in this material world. You can go back home, back to Godhead. So, Prabhupada is saying that following the instructions of the spiritual master to be able to go back to Godhead. following the discipline, following the instructions, because Mahajano Yena Gata Sapantha, Bhagavatam says, following the footsteps of the previous Acharyas, so following the instructions, not imitating. By imitation, we are not going to reach anywhere. But following the instructions, what are they telling us to do? By following in the instructions, we can get out of this material world, go back home. Uchishta lepan anumodito dvijay. Uchishta lepan anumodito dvijay. Sakrit samabunje tadapas takil bishaha. Sakrit samabunje tadapas takil bishaha. Evam pravratasya vishuddha chetasas. Evam pravratasya vishuddha chetasas. Tadharma evatma ruchi hi prajayate. Hare Krishna. Oh, can I... Hare Krishna. I couldn't hear yeah. you. Yeah. Anyone else wants to read? Okay, I'll continue. Translation. Once only, by their permission, I took the remnants of their food, and by so doing, all my sins were at once eradicated. Thus being engaged, I became purified in heart and at that time, the very nature of the transcendentalist became attractive to me. Purport. Pure devotion is as much infectious in a good sense as infectious diseases. A pure devotee is cleared from all kinds of sins. The personality of Godhead is the purest entity. And unless one is equally pure from infection of material qualities, one cannot become a pure devotee of the Lord. The Bhakti Vedanta, as above mentioned, of pure devotees, 
and the boy became infected with their qualities of purity by their association and by eating by eating once the remnants of the food stuff taken by them such remnants may be taken even without permission of the pure devotees there are past there are sometimes pseudo devotees and one should be very much cautious about them there are many things which hinder one from entering devotional service but by the way by the association of your devotees all these obstacles are removed the neophyte devotee becomes practically enriched with the trans with the transcendental qualities of the pure devotee which means attraction for the personality of god has name fame qualities past times etc infection of the qualities of the pure devotees which means attraction for the personality of god has name fame qualities past times etc infection of the qualities are pure devotee means to imbibe the taste of pure devotion always in the transcendental activities of the personality of god has this transcendental taste at once makes all material things this tasteful therefore a pure devotee is not at all attracted by material activities after the elimination of all sins or obstacles on the path of devotional service one can become attracted one can have steadiness one can have perfect taste one can have transcendental emotions and at last one can be situated on the plane of loving service of the lord all these stages develop by the association of pure devotees and that is the pur- purport of this stanza so narad muni is saying that he took he asked the vedanta bhakti vedantas that if he could take the remnants of their food and they allowed him and he said after he took that the remnants of their food all his sins were washed away he became purified he got so attracted to devotional service pure devotional service that the very nature of the transcendentalists became attractive to him and what is the nature of the transcendentalists the transcendentalists the pure devotee he is attracted hearing and chanting glorifying the supreme lord engaging in devotional service so by accepting the remnants pure devotional service became attractive to narad muni so prabhupada is here pointing out that the supreme lord he is completely pure and then when a living entity engages in pure devotional service then he can at one point see the lord we cannot see the lord with our contamination right now our consciousness is materially contaminated you know like how the window becomes dirty so we can't see clearly outside that needs to be cleaned and that process of cleaning that is devotional service hearing and chanting by doing so by doing so all the dirty things all the contamination goes away and then one can become steady in the path of devotional service steady in the path then have taste one will be steady in hearing and chanting then one will have taste to hear and chant about the lord one will have uh attachment to hear and chant of the lord one will have emotions for the supreme lord and one's love will be revived so these are stages in devotional service it all begins with association of devotees association <clears throat> is very powerful people who we associate with we tend to take on their qualities so by associating with the pure devotees we can get purified the pure devotees are always attracted to hearing and chanting about the supreme lord worshiping the supreme lord so by associating with them we will also get that desire to to become like them we will get their qualities they are always attracted to the to 
glorifying the Supreme Lord, his name, fame, qualities, pastimes. And so that's why association is so important, who we associate with. So Narad Muni is saying here that by the association of these devotees, pure devotees, by serving them, how he himself has become a pure devotee. Tatran Vaham Krishna Katha Prayagyata Tatran Vaham Krishna Katha Pragatyata Anugra Anugra He Nash Vam Mano Hara Anugra Hane Shranavam Mano Hara Ashad Tiyame Nupadam Vishrin Vataha Tashrat Tayame Nupadam Vishnu Vata Priyasha Vasyanga Mama Bhavat Ruchihi Priyasha Vasyanga Mama Bhavat Ruchihi Translation, O Vyasadeva, in that association and by the mercy of the great Vedantist, I could hear them describe the attractive activities of Lord Krishna and thus listening attentively, my taste for hearing of the personality of Godhead increased at every step. Purport. Lord Sri Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is attractive not only in his personal features, but also in his transcendental activities. It is so because the absolute is absolute by his name, fame, form, pastime, enterage, paraphernalia, etc. The Lord descends to this material world out of his causeless mercy and displays his various transcendental pastimes as a human being. So the human beings attracted towards him become able to go to back to Godhead. Men are naturally apt to hear histories and narrations of various personalities performing mundane activities without knowing that by such association one simply wastes valuable time and also becomes addicted to the three qualities of mundane nature. Instead of wasting time, one can get spiritual success by turning his attention to the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. By hearing the narration of the pastimes of the Lord, one contacts directly the personality of Godhead and as explained before, by hearing about the personality of Godhead from within all accumulated sins of the mundane creatures, our creatures are cleared. Thus being cleared of all sins, the hero gradually becomes liberated from mundane association and becomes attracted to the feature of the Lord. Narada Muni has just explained this by his personal experience. The whole idea is that by simply hearing about the Lord's pastimes, one can become one of the associates of the Lord. Narada Muni has eternal life, unlimited knowledge, an unfathomed bliss, and he can travel all over the material and spiritual world without restriction. One can attain to the highest person of life. Hare Krishna. Sir Tantin Radha heard pure devotee Bhakti Vedanta in his previous life. This process of hearing in the association of the devotee is especially recommended in this age of quarrel, Kali. When Arad Muni is saying, he heard in the association of these Bhakti Vedantas. He was hearing. Hearing what? Hearing the activities of Lord Krishna. He was hearing with attention. Attentively. And by hearing attentively, his taste for the Supreme Lord increased. He wanted to hear more and more. He was enjoying hearing more and more the activities of the Supreme Lord. So, Srila Prabhupada is explaining in the purport 
that Krishna is so beautiful to look at. Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead. Krishna is the supreme God, the supreme personality of Godhead. He is the absolute truth. And his form is very, very beautiful. His eyes, his hands, his, the way he stands, you know, it's very beautiful. But also his pastimes are very beautiful, very attractive. Like this month we are celebrating his pastime of being bound by Mother Yashoda because he broke the pot of yogurt, he stole the butter. So these are very attractive. His, att his activities are attractive. So Krishna, because he's absolute, there is no difference in his name, fame, form, pastimes, and Turash paraphernalia is all Krishna. This is all. His name is Krishna, he himself. His fame, his pastimes is Krishna himself. So they are very attractive. He comes to this material world. Why does he come? To attract our heart. So to tell us, come back home, back to Godhead. Don't be here in this material world. He says, come and enjoy with me. Have this eternal life with me. Just like before we see a movie, we like to see the preview. You know, we like to see the trailer. Oh, let me see how does the movie look. So Krishna comes to show us a preview of what's happening in the spiritual world. The pastimes which he showed us here 5,000 years ago, they are eternally happening in the spiritual world. So he's telling us, come and come and join me in my pastimes. And they are not only in the spiritual world, they are also happening right now in some planet or the other of the universe, of every universe of the material world also. Krishna's pastimes are eternal. So he comes to attract our heart. So we, we have a natural tendency to hear about someone, you know, oh, he did this, or she did this, what was she doing, what was she wearing, what was, you know. But by this, we just, by hearing about somebody material, we get more and more implicated in the material world, more entangled. Rather, Prabhupada is saying, our this natural inclination to hear about someone to speak about someone, we should hear and speak about Krishna because it's there. It's a natural tendency in us. Hear about the personality of Godhead. So what happens when we hear about the personality of Godhead? <clears throat> Our heart gets purified. We were hearing earlier, Sutta Goswami was telling that how by hearing, by serving the devotees, one gets a taste to hear about the Lord. When one hears about the Lord, then Krishna, who is within the heart, he himself cleans our heart of all the material contaminations, all the sins. And as one goes on hearing, one goes on serving, one's heart gets more and more, more clean. One gets taste, as we heard earlier. One gets taste, one gets attached to hearing about the Lord, one gets emotion from the Lord. And one goes back home, back to Godhead. One revives one's love for the Supreme Lord. So Narad Muni is saying this is what actually happened to him. He's an example of it. He's saying it happened to him that he was only, he was hearing the pastimes of the Lord. And now he's become a pure devotee. He sees the Lord. He speaks to the Lord. He's traveling everywhere, giving the, uh, spreading the glories of the Lord. He is eternal. He has unlimited knowledge and unfathomed bliss. Sat, chit, ananda. So by hearing attentively the transcendental pastimes of the Lord from the right sources, from the pure devotees. So the pastimes of the Lord are always attractive, but they should be heard from the pure devotees. So Narad Muni heard these pastimes of the Lord from the Bhaktivedantas. This is the process Prabhupada is saying is especially recommended for us in this age of Kali, hearing and chanting in the association of devotees. So, any questions?
stop here. Shla Prabhupad ki chai. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki chai. Gaur Bhaktavindu ki chai. Hare Krishna. Thank you 